Hi everybody, Ann Cornick from Paint and Porcelain Exchange. And for those of you who are beginners, I'm hoping to get you more interested in China painting and get you started and teach you what I know. And for those of you that have uh, been here a while, um, I hope to share some of the tips and tricks that I'm learning this summer at all the schools I've been going to. Now, today we're gonna talk about doing uh, the um, um, wet grounding, but doing it in a different way. So, okay, this is the wet grounding I did with the MX-54. I'm bringing it real close so you can look at it and examine it. Keep it in mind, okay? Now I'm gonna show you the cheat one that I didn't use MX-54 on. This is the one that I used today's method on. Okay? Can you tell the difference? Couldn't tell the difference. So, for those of you that don't want to spend time trying to find MX-54, uh, this is much easier. I learned this from Kathy Lewis. She taught me one way, and then I was at the teacher's meeting, our teacher's meeting in Michigan last month, and I learned another way. So I'm going to teach you two more ways that you can do wet grounding, and I think you'll be real pleased with them. Now, you don't have to have all the stuff. You know, so if you don't have MX-54, forget that one. I will show you new ways to do it today. So the first thing we do, and I'm going to tilt you down so you can see everything so that you know what's going on. So this, tip over. So this is a tile that I'm going to be doing this on. Now, the first thing was, I went out and looked for detail tape last night. I couldn't find it anywhere, so I think I'm just going to order it through Amazon. I can't find the one I bought, and so um, I don't have that to show you because on this that I did, excuse my reach, on this that I did, I put a piece of detail tape across here, and then I put tape here. But I don't have the detail tape, so um, you could use, as we did with the um, plaid, you could use contact paper if you have it and just cut it. Um, but this is this is what I have, so. Um, I just have the regular frog tape. You have to really press it down. So uh, Now, I keep my frog tape not only in the container, but I also keep it in a plastic bag because I feel like it, I, I know from experience that if I don't use it often, it does dry out. Hang on, it's kind of hard to open. Oh, okay, all right, I got it open. So this is my frog tape. It can be green or blue. It's painter's tape, basically. You don't have to have frog tape, per se. And um, I'm going to just divide this in half so you can see what I've done here. And put a, a stripe down the middle. Now, always put the stripe down and leave a tag on each end like this. Mm. <laughs> okay, scissors. <laughs> it's strong stuff. All right, there. So that you can peel it off using that so you don't touch what you're working on. And then really press it down. I mean, really press it down real well, all the way along. Okay, and then flip these ends under. All right, that's the first part of it. Now, the second part of it's kind of interesting. Let me move this out of the way. I'm gonna show you the second part. This is where you need, and we've used this before, so this should not be something new to you. Coke, I call it Coke syrup. It can be 7-Up syrup, but what we're talking about, and I always keep some in a little, um, a little one of these little dropper bottles, you buy, uh, regular Coke at the store or regular 7-Up. It can be either, but it has to be non-diet. And all you do is um, you open it up, let it go flat. That's what I do. Or you can use two cups and just go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth between the cups and it'll make it go flat. And that's it. And then I put it in a little jar and I save some to use as I need it. It has to have sugar in it, okay? You can also use sugar water if you're familiar with that, but I don't know how many people are familiar with sugar water, um, and I have difficulty mixing the right consistency and getting all the sugar out. So this works just as well. 
And usually I've been told it has to be flat. Other people say, no, it doesn't matter whether it's flat or not. So um, what I do is I'm going to take my first color here. And I'm going to put my color on here. Now, your colors for your grounding can be any color you want. They don't have to be dark. Okay, so I'm just taking a little bit. And this is shamrock. I don't know why I picked it, but I did. And then I'm taking some of the Coke syrup, and I'm just doing a drop or two on here. And I'm going to use my palette knife and mix it. Yes, Coke syrup and regular paint. This is regular China paint. I know it sounded weird to me too, but this is how she did it. And it works pretty well. The reason I think for the paint is that it helps the Coke syrup to stick. Otherwise, sometimes on a tile, it will slightly repel. and it can, Or on a piece of China, it will slightly repel and then you have a problem. So if you have something in it, and she said you could also add caro syrup. See how it, here it's starting to mix. Um, it will help the uh, Coke syrup uh, stick better. She said a little caro syrup will also do it. K-A-R-O for those of you that haven't heard about it before. I know it's done when it's like this, and I'll bring it up so you can see it. I hope this is, yeah, that's pretty good. See? Okay. All right. So now I'm going to bring the piece back that I was working on. I'm going to put this up in the corner, or close enough. Maybe you can see them both. Yeah, you can see them both. Okay. And wipe off my knife, because this stuff dries like strong, okay? Very strong. Now, the brush I'm using has never been in oil. It has never been used for china painting. It is a brush that I use for acrylic paints, so I've only used it with uh, plain old um, water. Okay, I've got water in here. And I'm going to wet this with water. Okay. Get it good and wet. And you just take and pick it up and paint. Make sure you paint the sides if you care about it. This is just a demo, so I'm not going to paint the sides. And you just paint back and forth. This is the first coat. It's not going to make any difference. If you don't paint it perfectly, um, the idea is you want to get this to stick and dry. This is Coke syrup. And see, this is uh, the tile I'm painting on, by the way, is uh, one of those dull finish tiles. So that's the reason it was fighting me a little bit. The slick one did not fight me like this. Uh, see how up there I needed to go over it again? Okay. All right. That's it. And you clean your brush with water. You clean your tile with water or and it will take off the um it will take off all the you know junk you have on it the coke syrup and the other and now so that we save a little time i already have one ready it's not quite as dark as this i wish it had come out as dark as this and here it is so we're going to let it dry and it's dry by the way, if you don't know this and you're new, you can use this Coke syrup uh, to outline things. Like, um, for instance, on this piece here, if I wanted to outline my um, outline my leaves or something, you just pick it up like you do normal stuff, and you can just, oops, can you see what I'm doing? Am I in there? Yeah. And you can just outline it. You can use it, maybe this isn't thick enough. You can use it as a pen. You can draw things with it. And it will dry. And then you can continue to paint with China paint over it. And just to give you an idea of how quickly things dry around here, let's, let me show you. This is dry already. The one I painted, okay? So that one's dry already. This one's dry already. I'm going to take these sponges like this, and these are makeup sponges. Um, this is how they come at the dollar store is where I get them. I don't want to spend a fortune for them, and you can get a bunch of them. They don't have to be, you know, good ones. They don't have, they just have to be able to be sponges. 
And then you're also looking for this, which is, oh shoot, I forget what the name of it is. It's, um, it's an athletic pre-wrap. See, it's spongy and it, can you see how spongy it is? And it moves like this. And you buy this at a sports store. And you can just ask them for a pre-wrap and it, it, make sure it's a spongy one. They'll look at it. Make sure you can see if you look at it closely, I think you can see that it's, it, it's got the, these little holes in it. It's not like the other. And you're going to cut two pieces of this. Let me just cut one. About this long, you know, not very long, like eight inches, 10 inches, maybe. And another one the same length. I didn't think I'd use this very much, but I'm using it a lot. And you put one on top of the other. So you have two layers together like this. Okay? And oh, let me get it a little better here. Okay. All right. Okay. And then you're going to take your sponge and you're going to fold it so that you get the, the longest end of it. See, there's the sponge. You've got a long end and a short and a shorter. You're going to put the points together so that you get the sponge down here. You're going to put it inside of your little doohickey here and just twist it really good. And you can tape it or you can rubber band it. If you have those little rubber bands, the little pigtail ones for babies, that's good too, but you can just tape it like this and it'll hold. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. So now we're gonna take and mix up regular green paint. And you mix it up as if you were mixing regular paint. So this, there's no nothing to it you can use. I wouldn't use mineral oil. I would probably use um, your regular oil or maybe even copaiba if you have it. I like copaiba, but you don't have to. You can, I've used regular oil and gotten the same results. So um, I'm gonna take my green, move this out of the way. I'm gonna take my green Now this you're gonna need more of. Depending on the amount of space that you're doing and how you want it to look, you're gonna need more. I'm gonna use Copaiba, you don't have to. You can use a regular oil. Uh, I use Copaiba because I like the fact that it dries fast. But like I said, you can use a regular oil. I've used regular oils and I haven't had a problem. And you're just gonna mix this like you mix regular paint. Okay, oops. It should be a little soupier because you want it more like, um, at least for me, I don't want it as thin as um, pen oil, but I do want it thinner so that it goes right on. You know, it's easy to apply. Okay, and then I take my little pouncer and I go in it and I pounce off to the side just to make sure that I've got it primed, okay? And then I'm gonna bring my piece back and you're just gonna pounce. And you wanna cover everything. Now this is Copaiba I'm using. You can use your regular oil. Absolutely fine. I would say if you have a fast drying oil or a medium oil compared to a slow drying oil though, that's probably preferred. Now you may have to do two coats on this. And I fired mine the first time and then I went back in and did a second coat. And I don't want to waste paint. So I'm just going to do this very lightly at the end here, but obviously this is not dark enough, but down here it is. So I've run out of paint now. So we'll just, um, oh, maybe I can get a little more out. Hang on. I'll mix that up with, there we go. Try that. Okay. Oh, get out of there. But see, it's real light. 
So you don't want it this light. When it's light like this out here, you don't want that. What you want is as much as possible to give it a constant coverage. The only reason mine is like that out here is because I'm running out of paint. Okay. Oh, I did pretty well, I guess. Make sure you go along the line. And that's all there is to it. Oh, another thing I should show you is say you want an effect. You can take your alcohol spray and spray it and get kind of an interesting effect on there too, if you want. So some people like an effect like that. So now I'm gonna do a pink, uh, what is it? Persian red. Okay, we're gonna have Christmas colors here. Oops, not quite that much. Although that is a nice amount for what I'm gonna be doing. Okay, so I'm gonna do the other half with this. So I'm gonna start by mixing, in this case, just my, um, just my Persian, uh, just my um, Willoughby's, my, here it is, Copaiba, just my Copaiba. And it's only with Copaiba. You wanna make it thinner than your normal paint. Um, it's the safer of the two groundings, I understand. The dry grounding means you use dust and, and it can be a little more dangerous because it's in the air and what have you. So this is usually what people prefer to do and I think it's helpful to know. Now see, that's a little thick. See, it's not drippy or anything. So I'm just gonna do one more. Not only that, but this will close up a lot faster. So I just did one more, yeah, that's better. You can kind of tell by the feel of it, it'll just move much better. Pull it together if you can, get it all in one spot, that's good. Now, same thing, and we're gonna cut two quick pieces. Again, one, doesn't have to be that long, and two, and it, it doesn't have to be that straight, you know. You just do the best you can, too. There we go. And I've got another little, this is it right here. You see the little guy? I'm going to put one. Oh, let's put this one on the inside. It's got a little cut in it. And then I'm going to fold this the same way. I'm going to fold it like this so that I fold. See how it looks? And you're going to take this and you're going to bend it back. Put it down in the center, pull this up, give it a good twist. This is much smoother when you do it than even uh, doing it with a silk, I think. So, okay, and then you're gonna take and put a little bit of tape around it, okay? Just so you have that pad there. And then you're gonna do the same thing on the other side. You're just gonna take it Test it a little on the side, like I did before. So let me wipe this off. Yeah, and then I'm gonna, hard, huh? Um, I like to use the darker colors to do this, to do the wet grounding, rather than the light colors, especially if you're trying to hide something. For instance, when I did my parrot, but when I did my parrot, Um, I did black over it, and I had a couple of things I wanted to hide. Um, I had some leaves and some things that were kind of out of, now see, I should have a little more mixed up, out of um, that I, I just thought weren't very good, and so I wanted to hide them. Now, this is not heavy enough. You want it And when you do it with black, you want to mix a um, just a little toothpick, dip it in gold, and mix it with your black, and you will get a much better non-chippable, hopefully, uh, black. This does not work as well for me as by putting the coke syrup down first. This is definitely going to need a second fire, or I'm going to have to mix up a lot more red. And again, I don't want to waste my reds. So I'm just gonna leave it like this. 
but I hope you get the idea. Does, I think the, um, the Copaiba method most likely needs two firings. And the one with the Coke syrup, I think you could get away with one as long as you put it on heavy enough. Okay. So now I'm going to take, while it's wet, now a lot of people say wait for it to dry. I do it while it's wet. I find the tab and I pull it up. To get that nice, clean, line. Okay. I do it while it's wet. So, well, thank you for watching and uh, pick up those brushes and keep painting. Bye-bye. Program, And I hope you'll take a minute to subscribe so that other people can learn more about China painting and we can get the word out to more people. Uh, you also can look at the links below. Uh, my paintandporcelain.com website has a lot of freebies and printables for uh, new and experienced painters, as well as studies, supplies, and even some of my hand-painted china. So thank you again, and I'll see you next time.